Okay. <laughs> it's not my topic. Today, I will talk about history, particularly what it is. But before you consider that this speech is likely as boring as the history classes you've taken in your half academic life, and before you say to yourself, this guy's speech is about history. Let's take a nap. Let me ask all of you the question first. What is history? What is history? This seemingly simple question, which could be answered in various kinds of answers, such as history is the past, history is the antique, history is the truth of what actually happened. History is the story of mankind, the progress of civilization. The most satisfying answer I used to know was, history is the collective memory of a society, the things that are remembered. In other words, history is the mechanism of choosing what should be remembered. As years go by, as years go by, and being a history major student for three full years, consuming a lot of articles and writing a lot of papers, I began to realize that there is more to the question of what history is. I used to think history is the mechanism of choosing what should be remembered. But if you look at the other way, when you are choosing what should be remembered, at the same time you are choosing what should not be remembered, what should be forgotten. And famous American historian called Peter Burke once described the mechanism of history as who wants who to remember what and who wants who to forget what. So when we make history, we're also making things that should be remembered and should be forgotten. Here is a fresh example. Has any one of you heard of the famous female historical figure, Helen Keller? Do you know Helen Keller? Yes. yes. Okay, good. I bet all of you know she is blind and she is deaf. Most of you also know she had a good teacher called Anne Sullivan, which taught her how to read and write, and even how to speak. I bet most of you also know she entered university, and she graduated successfully. Okay, but here is the problem. Does anyone of you know what happened to her after she graduated from university? Can anyone tell me? Any job? Take a job? That's a good guess. Oh, you want to have an answer? Mary. Mary. Get married, okay. Teaching? Okay, well, these are all good answers. I don't know if you're right or wrong. <laughs> it's okay, let me tell you now. When Helen Keller entered university, she began to get education. And through education, she realized that the phenomenon of blindness and death is not distributed equally throughout the population. That is, poor people and working people got a better chance of being blind and deaf. The working conditions at that time were not so good. Therefore, workers were easily exposed to working injuries. If they get hurt, they don't have money to pay for cureness, so they get blind more easily than rich people. Knowing this fact, Helen Keller graduated, and after graduation, she immediately became of social radicals. That is, she entered the Communist Party in America. She even praised the Bolshevik Revolution. She even hung a red flag on her house. At that time, newspapers in America praised her for being an intelligent and brave girl. But after she joined the Communist Party, newspapers and magazines condemned her, saying her political thought was eventually wrong. But Helen Keller, throughout her life, grasped onto her belief and fought for the working class and believed that the American society needed a radical change. So, 
it is obvious that the history we read in our textbooks is manipulated, manipulated by historians or politicians that want us to remember what and to forget what. The case of Helen Keller, historians at that time wanted people <coughs> like us to forget she was a communist because at that time in America, communism was regarded as a bad, a wrong political thought. That's why historians erased this part of history from Helen Keller and from us. Quite ironically, Helen Keller, Helen Keller fought throughout her life to learn how to speak, but is made deaf, made silence by history, or I should say, through history. So, dear Toastmasters, why don't you think about your history, what you have learned in your class, your history classes, what you have learned, and what people want you, have, want you to learn. But also keep in mind, there is a larger part of history that you have forgotten.